Hello everybody, this is Daniel Morrison from Matrix TSL and today we're going to be looking at the data recorder in Flatbone 8.2. So you should be able to see at the bottom of the screen we've got the data recorder open, we've got a blank project open in flow code. And you'll notice probably immediately that the data recorder looks quite a lot different than, than previous versions of flow code. What we've done is we've tried to make it much easier to use, so much simpler to, to add, add streams to the data recorder, add pins, much easier to activate ghosts and to make the data recorder much more customizable and, and more feature rich. So we're going to start off with a very quick example and then we'll show something a little bit more advanced. We'll show packet decoding at the end of this video. But just to start off, you'll, you'll notice we've got this add pin trace button. So in previous versions of flow code, you'd, you'd have to you make use of the system panel in order to utilize the data recording to add streams to it. Now it's as simple as we clicking this add pin trace button, selecting the pin that we want, for example, A0, and then clicking add, and you'll see a stream appear. So um, what we can do is we can, if, if we've got hardware connected, so you should be able to see in the top right corner of the screen, we've got the eblox 2 combo board uh, connected to a BL0011 PIC programmer. If we select the pin in, in the data recorder and we activate ghost by clicking the button here um, and we start pressing the pin A0, we're zoomed in a little bit farther, um, you'll see that the, the data starts to appear on the data recorder. So that's as, as I toggle pin A0 um, in hardware, then, then it's reflected immediately on screen in the data recorder as well. And if we turn ghost off so the data stops moving, you'll see that as I hover the mouse over over each interval. Uh, flow code actually calculates the, the time between each interval and displays that on screen. So that, that allows you to do some really cool analysis of, of the data that you're, you're looking at as well. So um, this is, this is pr pretty accurate as well. So Ghost, Ghost uh, operates at a, a fixed tick rate. So what that allows you to do is, is, is pretty accurately not perfectly, but pretty accurately measure the, the amount of time between each each interval here on the data recorder. So you should be able to see as well um, on the camera on the top right, I've got a, a debug e block connected to port E of the BL0011. And what I've got connected to, to the right, uh, the least significant pin is a signal wave generator as well. But what that means is if we add the analog 32 pin to the data recorder. So again, we just we click on add pin trace, we select the pin from the drop down, so analog 32, and we activate ghost. You'll see that you can see the, the data from the signal generator appearing on the data scope. And what we can do now, which is quite cool, is we can zoom right in over the data that we want. So we just make use of the scroll wheel. And you see we can get really close over uh, a point of interest so this is this is a sine wave being generated by the picoscope. We can increase the size of the stream vertically just by dragging. We can change the color of the stream and we can make use of, of the interval detection as well that we, we talked about a minute ago. So we can see the, the time between uh, the peaks and the troughs of, of the wave there. So that's, that's pretty cool. And what we've done in in Flowcode 8.2 is we've put support for higher sample rates in the eBlocks 2 hardware as well. So, so you can, if, you, if you're using a newer eBlock or you, you update your firmware on, you, on your eBlock, you can actually make use of a 250 kilohertz sample rate. So that allows us to, to use really sort of um, really fast frequency waves and to analyze them pre, uh, pretty, pretty accurately as well. Um, we're, we're looking at a wave in the 10 kilohertz range and we're sampling that at 250 kilohertz, so it's about 25 uh, samples for, for one, one instance of this wave as well. So that's, that's how we add streams to the data recorder and how we analyze, analyze the, the time intervals. And as you can see, we can, we can select 3v3 mode as well, just to tell Flowcode that our eBlock is operating in 3 volt 3 um, We can change the default colors of streams. We can change how much RAM we want flow code to allocate to each stream so this this increases the retention as well so if you have a very very fast sample rate lots of data coming in you can tell flow code to, to allocate more more buffer space so that's quite cool and quite useful what we're going to just look at now is a very simple example of packet decoding so i'm just going to open a project that i made earlier on and in this project we make use of the spi master component as well 
and it's a very simple flowchart. So we just we an, we initialize the component, the SPI master component, and we we increment a byte variable which we call uh, char um, from zero to two five five, uh, which will of course loop back around, and we send that over the SPI master component. So we can actually make use of the data recorder in simulation mode as well as ghost mode. So if we just run this in simulation mode here, you'll see a lot of fast data appearing on these streams here. These are streams that have been added by the component. So of course, um, you can add streams yourself using the user interface, but to use more sophisticated mechanisms such as packet decoding, you can make use of these streams that the component themselves add. So um, if I just stop simulation there, check properties, and make it so we can you can see the properties. Then you'll you'll see that actually this component is configured to add add scope traces. So so the refers to the data recorder here. So adding this com this SBI master component and and some of the other various comms components that we have that that automatically adds streams to the data recorder. And as you see, we've got some data here. We've got some timing. Uh, for the data, even though it's in simulation mode. That timing's not accurate, of course, because different computers run at different speeds. It's very difficult, uh, in software at least, to, to code a consistent tick rate. Um, but you can you can use these as approximations. So this is off by about 25-30%, but, but it's still useful as a, as a metric, especially when you compare different streams. Um, so, so we've got this data here for the SPI master, and we can click decode stream, and flow code will actually analyze each a collection of data and tell us what character that, that that corresponds to. So as you can see there, we've got 22. If we scroll left, or actually if we just zoom out, you can see that the, the, the character increments here. So if you get a variety of characters, it's going from zero to 255. So that's quite cool. So it's, it, for, for packet decoding, it's as simple as using making use of the correct component. And clicking this decode stream button, and of course we can clear the packets as well if we've if we've had enough of looking at that. We can scroll left and right by dragging as well. So, what what we try to put a lot of work into is is the ability to kind of move around your data and examine parts of the data. Try to make that a lot easier than in previous versions. So now you know we have the scroll wheel, and the scroll wheel zooms directly over the, the point of interest as well. So as you can see there, it's actually expanding that that particular interval that I'm looking at with my cursor. So that's that's how you decode streams. And what we can do as well is we can program the eBlock with this program. So if we just wait for the compiler to run for that, which of course varies depending on the speed of your computer and, and the complexity of the program, but it shouldn't take too long. And as you can see there, if we run the ghost mode after sending the program to the chip, we can click decode and actually view the, the packets being decoded from the hardware as well. So it's not just limited to software mode or, or simulation mode rather. We can we can change the scale um, that we're looking at in the top right corner as well. In simulation mode, this, this refers to a number of ticks. In ghost mode, this refers to, to relatively accurate timing. So we can choose the 10, a 10 millisecond time interval, um, which for this program isn't, isn't too useful. We can choose 500 milliseconds. Um, and then this corresponds as well to the scroll wheel as well. So you're, you're actually zooming in and out between these different time intervals. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I recommend you check out our other video on Ghost in general in Flowcode 8.2. And we've also got another video on the oscilloscope.